Isn't it such a nice feeling when things just go right? Round four, we're, we're three games in and things feel right again. I'm very happy. We're going to take the good with the bad, guys. So this is a extra good week. Much better than round three, which was pretty good as well. Round one and two, absolutely diabolical. For the selections that a lot of our you know, listeners kind of picked there, we're having a great week. Captaincy was a very interesting one. We've got Cleary with a big one. Payne Haas with a good one tonight. We had Grant with not so big after his you know cracking bunch of weeks. And a lot of good scores across these two teams. So let's start with the Storm and the Tigers. And Isaiah Papali'i back with a bang. 78 in his 80 minutes out there. Got a try assist. Got the try saver as well. And you know, 78 points. So he's back up to a 63 average. And you know, the price drops that he was getting there, they come back now. And you know, very, very clearly, Papali is one of those guys that's going to be an option post their buy and for the entirety of the year. Given he won't play Origin, he's one of those guys you need to look at on your side. Bateman, is he back? It looks like he may be. Skipped away, ended up, you know, should have should have got the try assist, which, you know, he definitely created, but he doesn't get credited with that. And that's obviously good for non-owners. He's at, you know, very low percentage there, 0.4. Papali is also low at the 5%. So... Yeah, I haven't seen any of the real top teams that have had probably in their side, and, and that may change over the next bunch of weeks. But Bateman there, 56 in base. Negatives were down, so he did have the two errors in the end and a missed tackle. But other than that, he's someone that's going to play 80 minutes. He's going to work hard. He has the offensive stats in him. Tackle breaks, offloads, you know, turnover tackle when he hits hard, for example. But you know him for, for tries, his potential tries down the line. He's in a Tigers team where he has to do a lot. So that's something to note as well. He was their highest tackle man, just above Papali'i there at 45. So him getting involved in that, we know he can do it on the other side of the ball. So 770, he's going to, yeah, he's probably only going to lose a little bit. I think his break even was in the 80s. So he'll he'll bottom out very shortly and he could be an option as well. With Tigers having their buy in round seven, that's something to, to look at with these guys and obviously a couple of weeks left until they have their buy. And then I think you can look to select those guys from there. Joshy King, so spoke about him this week as, as potentially having a huge game. He's going to get close to 80 minutes. He got the 71 minutes there, 69 points. So King has improved from last year, guys. He wasn't, he's not getting the scores and the, the efforts that he was getting last year. He would get sort of 35 to 40 tackles and miss a bunch and not have the meters gained. But he's added an offload to his game. He's got a couple of tackle breaks in there as well. So 69 for him, averaging 59 to start the season. I think he can clearly average 50 with the way that things are set up with the Storm at the moment. It wasn't looking likely he was going to have to play sort of 70 plus minutes. And now with all the injuries, he's going to be that guy they need to, to stick in the middle. That glue that they need to, to hold this ship together because they're they're playing okay. Like they, they started this game really well. The first half sort of back and forth and then they, they ran away with it a bit. Munster doing his thing. Um, you know, Grant could sort of steering the ship as well. But King is that guy that I think is going to be a great option. Having a buy in round nine, obviously with a lot of Storm players in your squad at the moment, with the Katoas, the Leoros there, the, the Harry Grants, that the King needs to be someone that you caution yourself with. But now is the time to pick him up because he's going to go up another sort of 40K or so to get the 660, and he'll be very quickly up to that 50 average and beyond. Willie Warbrick, this is one of those guys that we, we spoke about. Surely you can have a big game against the Tigers. They went right so much more, and he got a couple of ta he got a couple of line breaks in there. He obviously got his tackle breaks, a couple of offloads. He had three turnover tackles in the end, which is great. You know, a couple there just when they were dragging him over the sideline, threw it back into one of their players. They do give that one, so that was good. One in a tackle, um, yeah, but three is is awesome. We're not going to expect that every week. He did have fifty four before his update, and there's still you know thirty seven percent on him. But I think a lot of people had him on the emergency, so I hope that you were able to to loop him in this scenario. If you're not sure, guys, if you have him number five, then pop a non-player. So a guy on a buy, Joseph Suali, Ian Egan Butcher, these types of guys, Sam Walker, Teddy, Teddy, into that four spot, and you'll get Warbrick's points there. So I'm sure you've asked anyway, how do I get Warbrick's points? But that's how. How The best thing with him is he's going to start making some good cash now. Averaging 34, if he can score another 40 or 50, he's going to get up to a 400, 500 pretty quickly. And you know that's something that we were very worried about only making 47K and having a low score. He won't go up a crazy amount this week because he picked up the 13, but if he gets another 30, 40, 50 next week, that's where the big rise is going to be. So holding on to him, 
as long as we can until George Jennings comes back potentially. But that game will help him. He did have a, a pretty bad error there uh, just in the play the ball. So Bellamy won't be happy with that. So yeah, let's take the uh, price rises while we can with Warbury, okay? Munster, 59 for him. A welcome back game. Got a nice solid try there. Got a try assist in that one. Big run meters. He's back to normal, guys. So he's going to be one of those players that I think, you know, sometime during the year, probably in the back end, I think is the time to pick up Cammy Munster there with his lovely 59 score. He'll be a guy that averages 60 across the season, like we spoke about. Elikatoa continues to just do his work. 125 meters, five tackle breaks for him. Had the line break there, had two try assists in this one. So he's always there, ready to go. And I'm really happy with his defensive output. 33 tackles, three misses. He's kind of, he's working hard. Doesn't seem to be gassed, which is great. And still had, you know, 12 in negatives. He had a cracking first half, slowed it down a bit in the second. But that's it for Eli Katoa. Really, if you missed out on him, it's very sad because he's going to be about 130, 140 now, averaging 55. And if he continues somewhere around that 50 average going forward, he's got another 150 to 175 to make. Uh, which is really, really good for owners. Trent Leoro. So he had a cracker this week, 56, very limited on the negative side. Still, you know, gets has the odd error in him running that line on the on the edge, considering, again, he played majority middle the last year or so. His work rate was crazy. So 20 runs for him. He just wanted that ball in his hands at all time, which is great. There wasn't a, a load of points in this one, which allowed him to get his 37 tackles. We spoke about last week only having 24 most of the games he's been hitting 38. So getting those extra points there was what we were looking for. And he ran the ball a lot more. Only had the one tackle break. He's not that type of player. But if we can get that base there of 54 weekly, he's going to make a lot of money as well. So averaging 43 now, his price rises will continue to go after that 56. And next week, we'll have a lovely low, low break even. And you can make some extra money from him there. So very, very happy with this one, considering he's very low ownership at 9.5. Hold him at least until around nine by now, guys. So that's, yeah, again, Warbrick, Leoro, both guys we were stressing about last week. They've came back with a bang. And now we can hold them because they're going to continue to make some cash. And if you sold him this week, if you didn't play him, I'm very sorry. You needed him. So all these guys outscored Harry Grant. And a lot of you guys had him as captain. And, and very frustrating that he wasn't able to get any attacking stats in this one. Only 49 meters gained as well. Not good enough, unfortunately, if you're looking at him as a captain. We would have expected 80 to 100 meters. We would have expected a try or a try assist, most likely in this one, at least a tackle break or two or an offload. I uh, just wasn't able to get any of those. And 51, not the worst thing, he's averaging 65, which is what we hoped for this year. But for those who captained him, it's a little bit frustrating. But if you missed out on him and you cap and so if you captained him and missed out on Payne House or something, it is a 19 point swing, not a 38 point swing, which you might be thinking of. And I've had a few people ask me about that. Do the maths there. Add up the double grant, 102 plus the 70 of Haas. Okay. Or add up the double Haas at 70 plus the 51 grant. And it is only 19 points. I know I, a bunch of years ago I was like, how does that work? But it does. Lochi, 49. So he had a solid game. Welcome back to him. Again, not super high owned at 2.7%, but for those that do own him, that 49 is what you're looking for. A 49 average across the first uh, four games for him is uh, is solid. And he's kind of getting into all his work. The, the offload was put away in this game, and that's what you're looking for going forward for him to continue to score well. David Clemmer, the 48. So minutes, again, a bit of a worry. And that's what I spoke about, him not playing as big a minute. So the 50 average, he'll continue to go down just a little bit. But you know, 48 here is not the end of the world. Jonah Pezza, 28 tackles was lovely. He got involved in a lot, a lovely offload there, which helped them get the try assist, the offload to Eli Katoa to send it out to Warbrick. Did kick a little bit and had a couple of forced dropouts. I think he's going to be really helpful in this side if they do happen to have any injuries going forward. So he'll come straight in for Hughes or he'll come in for Munster. So if you did pick him up this week, which you know, a couple of people did at 1.3%, then he, he will be that guy that should be able to come in and average pretty well. Yeah, he got 47 this week. He had you know, 30, what, 34 last week. And it will do his job. And at that price point, at 230 last week, if you picked him up, awesome. 248 this week, he'll go up to about 275, 280. And with that, if you're looking at someone that you could you, know, you could slot in, it's definitely gonna play next week. And then if there's any injury to those two, he'll obviously play over Origin as well. So that's something to think about with Jonah. He looks like he's good enough to play first grade for sure. Fanua Pole, so he had 46 in this game. He's averaging 40 for the year now. So he'll continue to make a little bit of cash. Nothing crazy, but someone to, to look out for. Abby Corusau got a try, picked up nine missed tackles. So this is in his game for sure. Team, 
41 in this one was a solid one, but you need to get him out of your side. He's not going to be that sort of 50-plus scorer that he was at the Panthers. On and off, he'd play 80 minutes, get a huge score, play 50 minutes, get a good score, and then you have some low ones in there. But it looks like it's all pretty low at the moment. Not running the ball. We need him to run a lot more for him to score well. Um, many there with 41. Stefano Utukamanu with 40, so 44 minutes for him. Tackle numbers have been great, so he's really been getting involved on that side of the ball. And running the ball... Did okay, yeah, 87 meters, one tackle break. He Storm obviously had a fair bit of ball when he was on the on the park, hence the, the 30 tackles there. Okay, Adam Dewey, we need to speak about him because he was up at 49 for some reason. It looked weird because he didn't actually do a lot in the park, but down to 39, which makes more sense. He did a little bit of everything, but nothing spectacular. So had a couple offloads there, one tackle break, a line break assist, couple of goals you know ran for 155 meters still which is pretty normal for him and still kicked from number one so if you are holding him the 39 is frustrating 6.8 percent still have him in their side you got that look of him now what you saw of him in this game was not good he didn't have the acceleration he wasn't able to dart through line there's a few chances there where it was a little bit open and the normal adam dewey pre-injury would go for that line and then if he can't get it, potentially get an offload away and do something there. And he's in a pretty poor team as well. So we definitely expected Tigers to be better. They weren't. He now has an injury and he's playing in the one jersey. Ugh, yuck. Got to, got to get him out now and he's going to buy in a couple of weeks. Asuka Poa, for anyone who picked him up, he's done a pretty good job as well. 1.2%. He got a 38 in the center position. Exactly what he needed was a try in this one if you're playing in the centers for the Tigs. And, you know, tackling wise, this solid. Seems to have solid base, guys. So... He's someone that you can continue to hold while he's in the team, but every chance he goes back to the bench, like a Shawnee Bloor, who come out and got 37 in his 31 minutes. So two offloads for him, 23 tackles. Again, when he was on the park, a lot of defending there, which is great for fantasy. And you pick up a, a nice price rise there at 37. So at 249, hopefully he can get a few games like this. So I'd be holding Bloor from here until something changes and he's out of the side because there's every chance that there's an injury, he could get into that starting side and score well, like we hoped he would in that first game when I played him and he got hit a head injury, unfortunately. Brendan Wakeham, 28 for him. A few people asking about him, not really an option. With Dewey kicking as well, Wakeham only kicked for 149, so Dewey kicked for more than him, which is not good. Remus Smith needs to be traded out, guys. I know there's a bunch that started with him. He hasn't done very well. He needs to go. Warbrick has now averaging a lot more than him after it was uh, fairly close before this week. And you know, down the line, Bronson Garlic, had an okay game, didn't get the minutes that you would hope for if you do own him. Charlie Staines doing his normal work with the 20. Dane Laurie only came on for nine minutes at the end. And that was that. That is that game team. Let me know your thoughts on that one and how your team's going. I ended up looping Leoro. So he is in my five jersey. I've got Suwili in the four now. And yeah, that's how I'll be getting those points. I've played eight, including him. I think I'm in the mid 500s, which is good. Payne has his captain. I, you know, obviously Cleary got the 83. Updates, guys. It looks like that's the only the game that hasn't updated. There's some weird reasons as to why it's happened before. So likely it'll come hopefully over the next few days. But if not, it'll be in mon on Monday when the updates come through, which is yeah frustrating. But just know that it has been updated on the NRL app if you haven't seen it. And that's where my discussion was coming from on the Thursday video. And yeah, hopefully it updates. Okay, Payne Haas. So you end up with that try saver, thankfully, in the update, which was good. I was banking on it. They missed out on one tra tackle bus, which, whatever, is what it is. Um, four tackle breaks there, 32 tackles, three offloads, 157 meters. I do really like the split that he did, coming off about five minutes before half. I'd like him to come in about five to 10 minutes earlier, so he gets 60 to 65 minutes. Of course, the two games that I captained him, he had the lower minutes, but he did have a better fantasy output in this one. So getting those offloads... Um, and getting involved on, on that side of the ball. You got 20 in uh, attacking stats in the tackle breaks and offloads, which is great. But a 70, very happy with his output over the first bunch of weeks. 65 is his average. He will go up a little bit now. He's only gone up 19K, but averaging 65 when he's priced at 56 is exactly what we're looking for with Payne over the first four weeks there. And he'll continue that. And this is the kind of output he provides when he's not injured. And you can imagine what he was doing when he was playing 80 minutes, because he's an absolute wrecking ball. This gets better and better. Jared Wallace, he loved that try, didn't he? It was a pretty fun game, wasn't it? 18-12 to the Broncos. There's a decent amount of errors in there. Dolphins couldn't complete like they did the previous weeks, which we'll speak about in that three-game impact and stats video. Uh, but that's why they lost this game, just the, the incompletions. 
Wallace there, 30 offloads, 24 tackles, 6 tackle breaks, 130 meters and a try. He was great. For those of any, anyone that picked him up, he's now averaging 38 and he'll start to make some money. Unfortunately, he lost a bit with a, a couple of injuries and the like. Katoni Sags, if you owned him, very, very happy finish. He's down to 492k and you know he's now averaging 42 with those last two big scores. And this is what I said, this is 20 and 70, 20 and 60. This is his game. And he was very much looking at close to uh, mid-20s to 30 before the runaway 100 meter try a couple of tackle breaks in that uh, in that and the uh, and the try so ends up with 237 meters it was inflated by that final play if you didn't watch this game but yeah 59 you're very happy with pat carrigan end up with a try saver as well i'm not exactly sure when that was i try to watch him closely because he frustrates me because i don't own him but 57 for him 59 is the average and he's up nine points on his average from, from what he was priced at the beginning of the year so he was great what I will say though, I'm not sure where the try saver come, but he, I think he should have got a try a, a line break. He did make it through the line and eventually got tackled, but that's called a line break, guys. Should be putting that in there. Uh, maybe that's not you know that's not how they judge a line break that he you know must go through and maybe you know, only getting through a few meters doesn't count as a line break. I don't know. Okay, I gotta eat my hat on this one. The hammer has improved dramatically. Wow, he's a 489k now, and I don't even know if that's I still think that's unders. He's gonna be 500 and what? 520, 525, 530 after this? Oh, it's frustrating. But I'm gonna declare it, guys. Hamiso Tabuai Fado is a clear keeper in the centers. Almost a keeper in the wing fullbacks. I can't go that far yet. I'm going to make the call that he is a clear keeper in the centers. So massive congratulations to anyone that's brought him in over the last bunch of weeks because he has been spectacular. He has improved dramatically as a footballer. The efforts that he goes through in getting out of trouble, him under the high ball, amazing. His support play, getting better and better. A try saver in there, getting the try, just being available at all times for yeah, attacking plays. Seven tackle breaks, there's no offloads in there. Six kick defusals, he's always there, ready to go to, to collect the ball. And yeah, I can't sing his praises any more highly. I am a Cowboys fan. I'm coming from what he displayed at the Cowboys in a good team. Dolphins are obviously a good team as well. His efforts at fullback, I didn't rate that highly. I thought he was okay at best. His efforts on the wing, worse than okay. So he's obviously a better fullback, but what he was at, what's he, what he's been able to show over this four, first four weeks, scoring a try in all of them has been spectacular. 50 is the average. I think he can average a 45 to 50. Pretty comfortably, dual position, has a buy in round 11. Shouldn't be playing Origin. I suggest that a lot of you guys get him in your side. If we don't happen to get the option of Zach Hosking next week and you want to improve your center or wing fullback, Hamiso Tabuai Fado is the guy to have in your side. So that's enough chat on him, but yeah, very happy for everyone that picked him up. I did not, but yeah, there's always uh, 23 more rounds to rectify that. Herbie Farnworth, also a clear keeper in the centers, guys. If you want him over this nice run that they have, He's a superstar, 48.5 average. He hasn't had really any of those games where he absolutely went nuts, but all of them have been very consistent, and I think he's a guy that you want to be looking at grabbing at some point as well. Obviously more expensive than, than the Hammer, and I think they'll average slightly, uh, probably similar. Herbie maybe slightly above, because Hammer's just been scoring so many tries, and Herbie doesn't have to do it on a weekly basis, and had some opportunities there where it could he could have scored even more and got another try assist or got another try streaming through the gaps there on that left side. He's so fast, so talented, and so smart. Selwyn Cobo, continuing to lose money, and that is gonna help sell that uh, in those price drops there. He was good there, 50. Just a super talented ball runner, isn't he? So keep an eye on him as he gets cheaper for sure. Mark Nichols back with a vengeance for him, 55 minutes, 49 points. If you grabbed him last week and held on to him, hopefully, then you, know, you didn't rage trade him after last week. You've got a very improved score. And, you know, that's three scores now where he's done this and he's got keeper level or close to keeper level scores. Obviously, he's very much priced up, so that's that. Connolly Lemuelu, very excited with his output there. He did get a try saver. I think one of them was called off, uh, offside and, and he snuck under as they were trying to score. So they got the, the 10 meter penalty inside 10, the minus one, which I think he got, and then got a try saver after that. So we'll take that play of plus four uh, with the tackle. So um, very helpful. But... Yeah, he was great, guys. 26 tackles, three misses. Did sneak a line break in there on a nice run just before halftime. We were absolutely cheering with that one. Uh, but yeah, has the, the random offload in him. They end up losing the ball. Oh, sorry, the other team end up touching it. And they 
they dropped it. But um, yes, yeah, so it didn't get the offload hand, but 36 in base is what we're looking for here. Got a center at 445 that's gonna do a great job for you. Probably around a 40 average is what we're hoping for. Exceeded that this week with the 48, but you know, he didn't have any try assists or anything like that, which he seems to be getting week in, week out. So Connolly Lemuelu, a great option for your sides, and you know, he ended up getting traded in by a bunch, but only 7% ownership is a big win in the center position. Obviously him, Hammer, if you have both of them, you have terrific centers at the moment. Aiken, getting better guys. So people asking if he's an option, he's improved over the last few weeks and he's doing a great job, so keep looking at him. Tommy Gilbert, 43 in his 66 minutes. He got a nice head clash as well. Had a bunch of negatives in this one, neg 14, and you know, that shows that he is human and he can't absolutely dominate, but the minutes are awesome, guys. He looks like the, the guy in that middle that is very much in everything. He's in the niggle, he gets around the boys, he is their, one of their leaders in the pack. So they're really using him in that role. And I still think he's a great option, guys. I can see him averaging 50, which is, you know, with that 43, he won't go up too much. He's got about 70 or 80 to 100K to make, I think, if he can average at 50 over the first, you know, over the rest of the season. Likely to play Origin though, so that's something to think about. I don't know if I'd be picking him up, I probably wouldn't at this stage. But if you started with him, keep holding on. Reese Walsh, 40 for him. He was involved in a bit, did get a try saver. Looks like that good tackle they gave, potentially gave him the try saver. Let me know if it was a different tackle uh, that I didn't see. But a nice try assist, couple of line break assists, running the ball, kicking a little bit as well, getting four points from that. So replacing you know, goal kicking with the, the kicks in general play, which is good. For him to get 40 in this one without any tries, without you know just the one try assist there, was good, you know, only a lack a, a lack of tackle breaks, only the two. I think he could hold on, hold on to Walsh there. He's still got plenty of money to make, you know, probably 50 to 100. I'd see him averaging 45 to 50, which is cool. Jesse Arthur's a de decent one for him. I don't think he's an option, a bit of an awkward price. You got Milford there. The big news out of this one is that Sean O'Sullivan looks like he's got a torn pec. I haven't heard it confirmed yet, but it sounded very uh, certain last night that that's what he has which means Milford and Katoa are probably gonna be there, the guys there. I still don't think Milford or Katoa are an option. Katoa might need to control things a bit, but you see when Milford's out there, he does do the bulk of the kicking. So yeah, either one of those guys, eh, not really a cracking option there. Asako with a 33, so down a little bit on his first couple of games, but he's been great. You got Reynolds with the 32, not very happy with his output, obviously on four or five or six at half time and, and obviously improved from there. Did get the try assist, kicked a bit, didn't run at all. Just not a, a great game for him. Only the one goal, which he kicked from the sideline, the other two he missed, which uh, wasn't nice. And he will be better for the run. That first half was bad. Second half, he picked up obviously what, 26, 28 points. So two of those halves and that's without doing anything crazy. And he's back up to his fifties and sixties, but very upsetting if he did pay the extra money to pick Reynolds and instead of going for Shawnee Johnson there or a, you know, a Lemuelu or something like that. You wanted to go cheaper if you didn't need the half cover. Mam has a 31 in here. Just, yeah, that very up and down scoring. Don't have him as an option at this point. You've got Testy New, unfortunately had a, a tough one. He had a knee injury the whole game and, and still ended up kind of doing okay, you know, for anyone who owns him, but he hasn't been great. Mason Teague's the interesting one here. You got the 43 minutes. At the start of the game, he was looking great, but a lot of negatives from there. So if you own him, you still get a little price rise, but someone you need to avoid. Cody Nicarima, unfortunately, with that big head clash, went down. Ray Stone, 54 minutes for, for 19 points. He's getting the minutes, uh, well, he did in this one with the injury, but I don't think he's gonna be an option going forward. And unfortunately, he wanted a lot better output from the 54 minutes in that one for the big percentage of ownership, uh, almost 18%. And Fama Silly there, he ended up starting in the middle with Kenny Bromwich starting on the edge, even though he was named in that position. So this makes sense. He is a middle, Kenny Bromwich is an edge. I don't know why they would have done that any other way, but you know, it all uh, the, the smarts prevailed in this one. But that's the uh, two games for Friday night. Obviously a very long video, lots of people to talk about. Most of, For most of us, half our teams are completed at the moment in our captaincy. So there are less scary options coming up in the next bunch of games. But I hope you enjoyed the two Saturday games this week. And we have three on Sunday there uh, to round out the week. So good luck all and have a good one.